Hey, welcome back to this series where we are learning how to integrate AI tooling into web applications. In the previous videos, we got our project set up and did some basic integration. So I thought it would be a good idea to, in this video to take a step back and learn a little bit more about how these AI tools actually work. So we're not gonna be doing much coding today and I'm mostly just going to be talking at you. Hopefully that's okay. And so far what we've built is a very basic UI that has a text area that can take whatever user wants to write in it. And it sends that data as an HTTP request to OpenAI's API, which comes back with some streaming response and updates the page as the text comes in. Now that's well and good, but it's really not much more than a glorified HTTP client. So to make that a little bit more interesting, what we're going to focus on today is uh, sometimes referred to as prompt engineering, uh, but we're gonna have a little bit of a history lesson on what AI is and how it works. So AI stands for artificial intelligence, and it's basically this idea that uh, computers can think and reason and solve problems without having the uh, mechanism for solving those problems hard coded into them. So they kind of learn how to solve the problems based on uh, some sort of training. And it's the focus of the field of study of machine learning, which uses different tools and methodologies and mechanisms to train computers to essentially think. One of these methodologies is the artificial neural network or neural network for short. And it's basically inspired by the biology of the human brain. So a neural network consists of several different nodes and their sort of connection or relationship between the nodes. So you can think of these as uh, neurons and their axons and synapses in the human brain. And now within the sort of taxonomy of neural networks, there is a subset called the large language model. And the large language model is essentially a neural network where all of the uh, nodes and connections are essentially just based off of language and words. Now the large in large language model is actually a bit of an understatement because a lot of these LLMs are trained on data collected off of the open internet, uh, which could be petabytes of text-based information. And as a result of training off of this much information, these LLMs can uh, end up with what are called parameters in the order of billions or trillions. Billions upon billions upon billions. Now these parameters are what the LLM ultimately uses to decide what word to generate based on whatever input it's received. And that and billions is a particularly large number considering the fact that uh, the English language has only about 500,000 distinct words. So when you ask a question to an LLM or provide it some sort of input, it will use those parameters to try and come up with an answer. And this is uh, essentially based off of the context that you provide it, as well as the context of the data that it was trained on. Uh, but it's trying to find uh, some sort of answer that uh, follows a probability curve that is uh, based on the association of all of those words and it determines the strength of the association between words using something called embeddings. Now, embeddings are interesting because uh, embeddings are essentially a uh, list of numbers that represent a certain thing. And when we're dealing with language models, that thing is probably a word. So what you would do is take a word and convert it into a list of numbers. I'm going to uh, give you an example, uh, an oversimplified example, by uh, essentially saying we're gonna chart words onto a two-dimensional graph using X and Y coordinates. So we take a word and we give it, uh, we assign it an X coordinate and a Y coordinate, and then we take another word and we assign it an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. And we do that for all of the words that we're trained on. And as a result, you end up with all of the words that are, are sort of semantically similar, uh, having similar X and Y coordinates and therefore ending up on the chart in the same sort of regions and other semantically similar words in a different area on the chart, uh, but also grouped together. That's kind of how it works, except when we're dealing with uh, these neural networks, uh, we're mostly, we're not usually dealing with uh, two-dimensional charts. We're dealing with multi-dimensional, like several numbers. So multi-dimensional models. And all of these semantically similar things somehow end up uh, grouped close together. 
Okay, so that's about as deep as I wanna go into some of the conceptual stuff. I wanna bring it back into something that's a little bit more closely related to our application and what we're building, and that is uh, GPT. Now, GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, and you may be familiar with tools like ChatGPT, which uh, are types of GPT models. Now, a GPT model is essentially a uh, uh, a subset of an LLM that is trained to generatively sort of predict what the next word may be. And so when you give these GPT tools some sort of input, they can process that information with their parameters and their embeddings, and they can essentially predict the next word and then feed that back to itself to predict the next word and then the next word and then the next word and keep going until it comes to essentially the end the natural or what it thinks it's the natural end of the thought and now we have to talk about a very important point that i have to drive home and that is that uh as i've sort of hinted at these models uh and their output are non-deterministic they're sort of based on some sort of probability curve that it's going to use to predict what the next word may be, but it might be something totally different so for the same input you could get a completely different output uh the next time so if I provide it some sort of input, like I really love a good banana, a GPT model may respond with something like bread or pudding or cream pie, because based on the data that it's been trained on, those are semantically similar terms that are commonly found with banana. But because the answer is based on some sort of probability, uh, there is the chance that the GPT returns something like hammock. So this is important to keep in mind, especially for building applications that rely on accuracy, because these LLMs have no concept of true or false or right and wrong or facts and fiction. They are just producing the what they think is the most likely uh, output for whatever the input is based on the data that they've been trained on. And so when a GPT returns some sort of response like, I love banana bread, it has no idea what the concept of banana bread even is. It has no idea what a banana is or bread is, or the fact that banana bread is amazing. All that it knows is according to the data that it's been trained on, uh, it's pretty common to find banana and bread together. And occasionally it may also find banana and hammock together. And so an interesting thing can happen when an LLM is trained on some data because it may develop associations between words and terms that humans would never make because we have some concept and understanding of what those uh, words and terms mean. And as a result, when you ask it uh, an, a question, it might come up with an output that is wrong or ridiculous or categorically false and we call these uh, sort of weird behaviors hallucinations, which is a cute term and can lead to some pretty funny results that maybe you've seen before. Okay, that is about as far down the AI rabbit hole that I want to take us. Uh, hopefully you learned something interesting and I was able to give you a better understanding of what these things are and how they work. Uh, if you did learn something, let me know by hitting the uh, like button there or throw you know a comment or question in the comment section below and I will try and get back to you as soon as I can. In the next video, we are going to get back into coding and we're going to try and uh, explore some of these concepts and topics uh, through this term called prompt engineering, which is a really fascinating way to uh, essentially change the behavior of our application without actually changing the logic in our code. So hopefully that sounds interesting to you. If you have an idea of an AI application that you might want to build, this is the video where uh, we're going to really start differentiating our apps from each other's. So I think it's going to be a fun one. And if you want to be notified when it comes out, be sure to hit that subscribe button. All right, I hope to see you in the next video and uh, let's keep building some cool stuff.